was that you know why the game started for the team to fight back and, and get a win? Yeah, it was good. Obviously, disappointing to give up seven goals in the first quarter, something we haven't seen for a, for a period of time. But um, you know, they jumped us and they, they played really well and, and got the ball out through the front and just couldn't stop them. But uh, you know, I was pleased with our, our guys' endeavour, effort, and intent to, to get back in the contest and. Eventually rested away. You know, it was a pretty good game of footy, hard and tough, and um, you know, probably wouldn't just say fortunate in the end. There's a couple of goals they got that we we like back, but um, you know, it was really pleasing to see us fight that hard to, to get the win. What changed from your perspective after the midway through the second quarter when you started to get the game back on your terms? Oh, I just thought we probably allowed them to transition a little bit easily. Uh, we tightened our screws defensively. Um, mm -hmm. They they tried a couple of things that worked early, and we adjusted a little bit. Um, but you know, I think they got a. Stoppage goals obviously hurt. I think they kicked five from you know their forward 50, which is catastrophic in, in nature. So we'll uh, we'll go to work on that. We can't allow that to happen again. They're just too easy. Those scores to give up and, and seven goals overall. That might have been nine goals overall from stoppage. I think I'm not too sure, but um, we've got to get better in that area. What'd you make of Dustin Martin's performance, particularly in the second when the game was? Yeah, I, I thought he started to turn the game for us. You know, started to get some really important possession. I thought him and Dion and Shane went to work and started to get the game a bit on more on our terms. And really pleased with the rucks lifted after quarter time. I thought they were disappointing in the first quarter, but you know they're young and inexperienced. But um, you know Adam challenged those guys, uh, Soldo and Marbs, and they were a hell of a lot better after quarter time, which is pleasing as well. So it's always good when you get a response from players. We just thought they'd bring it a little bit earlier in the first quarter. Would have been nice. How important was that second quarter? I guess that. I assume you knew the rain was coming. It was sort of you conceded seven goals in the first quarter. How important was it to fight back in that second quarter before I guess sort of the heavens opened and it came a tough slog? Yeah, it was important to show that we could match it with them in the dry, if that made sense. Like obviously the first quarter was dry and second quarter was dry until half time. So I thought we had ascendancy in that quarter. Um, what I probably didn't realise is how strong the wind was going to the to the right of screen as well, which is a uh, second week in a row at the G. It's been a little bit a little bit tricky. So. Um, yeah, it was good to get back on terms. You know, we probably missed a goal late in the last quarter that would have been nice to nice to kick, but we can't have everything. Adam Sanders can see he doesn't want to project forward going into September, given the R2 genuine premiership contenders. Can you look at ahead of the finals? Sorry, that one or Yeah, that one to Oh, listen, I'm a little bit the same as Adam. We'll just turn our focus pretty much to Brisbane straight away now. Could have another important game next week and uh, what I will say was outstanding to see fifty seven thousand people, you know, turn up for a game and they got a hell of a game and yeah, you know, it was good of them to brave the, the conditions, but we uh, we need those people back next week as well, which is important. Yeah, how critical just to have the you know the ball in your foot, foot almost. You know, your, your finals top four hopes are in your own destiny. Yeah, absolutely, and it's it's been a great season. There's some outstanding sides playing some some good brand of footy, and you know, some games that are still going at the moment that keep everything alive. And it's probably what we want, you know, from a competition point of view. Not great from a coach trying to trying to relax, but um, look, it's a great contest at the moment. And there's any number of sides that can possibly win it, you know, down through ten. So it's what the AFL want: the equalisation in effect, and we've just got to make sure we're playing our best footy come next week. Yeah. I don't think that's what the rule was brought in for. If you don't want flop, you know, high marks in the game, come on. You know, I don't know. I don't think it's a good look, personally. You have to, ch have to alter what he does, given that... No, well, no. Mm -hmm. End of the day, the rule for me was brought in for the guy that kicks the guy in the head. Last time I looked, uh, that player's head wasn't on his hamstring. Have some common sense. So you think you're just common sense on board? Well, I, I, I didn't know why we needed the rule in the first place, to be perfectly honest. We seem to have a very reactive nature at stages. The game of AFL is so tough on these blokes. Don't give them so many rules. Um, Dylan Grimes, how is he? Oh, look, he's, he's walking around at the moment, so um, we'll, we'll assess once we get more information. We'll, uh, we'll let you know. Um, finish the game, which is a positive for us. It has blown up a little bit, which is generally not a bad thing, if that makes sense. So. Uh, you know, he's a really important player to the way we play, so we'll assess him and monitor him uh, very heavily tomorrow. Is um, Sydney Stacks season looking like it might be over? Oh, not over. Um, it'll be a little bit delayed, obviously, with the, the syndesmosis, which is disappointing. So he'll, uh, he'll have surgery at some stage this week. Um, you know, we've just got to hope for a good response. You know, Lambert had a similar type of injury possibly a week earlier last year and he got back and played finals so <coughs> look Sydney's a really important player the way we play um, so we're hoping he'll come back he's uh, he's put his name down already that he reckons he'll be fine you reckon Indigenous blood will get him back so I'm prepared to back him in. And Toby need curves will he be available? For next week? Yeah, yeah possibly um, you know he trained today so he still has got some 
some soreness. So we'll just monitor him and. You know, once again, it's just sort of a, a scar tissue incident at the moment that's causing him a little bit of a concern, but uh, we're pretty confident he'll be uh, available to play at some stage, hopefully next week. Coach? Yeah, well, he could have played probably today. You know, once again, our medical staff really wanted to get a couple extra sessions in at high intensity, and they, they went through that. He, you know, ran really hard today, ran hard on Friday, I think it was, as well. So he, he looks primed, ready to go. So we look forward to welcoming him back next week. What do you think, mate, of your performance overall? Are you playing as close to your best footy as you could be this time? Um, it's hard. You ask a coach that. We'll always find room for improvement. But what I am happy with is it looks like a Richmond brand of footy. You know, time in forward half was significant for us. We, we managed to get the ball, you know, play predominantly from a territory game, but just couldn't quite get the scoreboard. <coughs> Sorry, dominance we were after. You know, we left a couple of goals on the table, but... That's what West Coast do. They're, they're a good side. They punish you on turnover when that when that happens. And just, geez, they don't miss goals, do they? They're so clean with their, their ability to finish as well. And that's what makes them a great side, you know. And that's why we're really happy to play those sides at the back end of the year, give us, you know, every chance to see what our best footy looks like. Just Charlie, Charlie Cameron looks a handy little player. You got the defenders wanting to put their hand up? Or yeah, right? he's a jet, isn't he? He's, um, God, he's good to watch too. It's, it's amazing how you gravitate to all those sort of players that are really exciting to watch. And now we're going to have our hands full next week. You, know, you look at Charlie, then you've got hip put up there. McStay's having a great year as well. And so the big O as well. So it's going to be a good challenge for us again. Uh, one we're looking forward to though. Call me old fashioned, but what about Jason Castagna kicking around the body before half <laughs> time? Are you happy with that? Or happy well, I'm happy if he kicks it. <laughs> if he doesn't kick it, it's another. Look, it's one of those ones. It's, it is. You know, the players practice those all the time and they generally get them. We, look, at uh, the end of the day, I'll back the kid in. He, he knows what's best for him. And, you know, once again, as a, a guy that kicked 12 career goals, I'm probably not one to be giving him any sort of advice, I wouldn't think. What's yeah. your best in your 12 goals? I can't. I reckon half of them are free kicks, to be honest. <laughs> I'm not too sure.